What's up guys, this is Technicube and you are watching Mobile Computing Fundamentals. Let's understand multiplexing in this you know, session, okay? So I hope you had seen multiplexing in various subjects like in, um, uh, like in data communication, wireless communication, computer network, advanced computer network and many more other subjects, right? Uh, if you are not familiar with this, uh, this concept, then I'll, I'll make you explain. Uh, so you see, the multiplexing is actually, it is a set of, is the is the set of techniques is a set of techniques that allow simultaneous that allows simultaneous transmission of multiple signals transmission of multiple signals and important thing here is it allows multiple signals but uh, but here it is across a single data link which is important here across a single data link okay it allows multiple signals to uh, to move from one end to another end but across you know across one single data link by means of this i will create one diagram here which is let me just you know just scroll it okay so the diagram it exactly looks like this so here i have n input signals so these are the n input signals i'll write it down n input signals or n input stations this is an input users and these are going to link up with a device known as MUX. So this is your MUX. This is your multiplexes. Exactly. It, it says as multiplexes. And this is the one single data link. This is the one channel. And here at the receiver side, we have a device known as D multiplexes or I will write it as DMUX. Okay, so DMUX and MUX. So again, I have N, in, uh, N output stations or N output users. N output users. So this is one link or one channel. So this is your multiplexing where N input users can can combine their combine their data uh, with the help of this device MUX and send it through one link channel. It is received by the DMUX and it gives you to gives the data to the respective users. Okay, so this end is going to be your sender side. So at the sender side we use multiplexer and this end is going to be your receiver side. So at receiver side we use D multiplexers. Okay, I hope you understand it. Now let's understand how many types of multiplexing techniques we have. So again, I'll give you the flow chart of this. So multiplexing, I have. Let me give you this. These are the these are the certain types of multiplexing can, come and exist. Okay. So the first uh, multiplexing is known as FDM. Then we have TDM. We also have something called as WDM, we have SDM, and also we have CDM, code division multiplexing. Okay, and I also I will write it down here. FDM stands for frequency division multiplexing. Okay frequency division multiplexing now in terms of tdm the change aspect here is going to be your time and again the division multiplexing or it is it is going to be same wdm it means wavelength division multiplexing i'll explain you these uh, three or four types of multiplexing in the respective you know sessions okay Next thing is going to be your CDM, 
and CDM stands for code division multiplexing and the last one is SDM that is going to be your space division multiplexing so these are these are one then two then three four and five types of multiplexing come and exist I hope you understand it okay now let's understand one by one so the first multiplexing we're gonna understand is going to be your FDM which stands as frequency division multiplexing let me write it down here we will understand frequency division multiplexing now what happened in FDM so I'll make you understand let's say let's say I have one channel okay this is the one channel and someone had allocated me uh, some frequency or some band let's say I have an allocation of 500 Hertz so this complete channel this complete link is going to be 500 Hertz let's say this has been allocated by some organize some organizations just like TRAI okay so they had given me now I want to divide my frequency to the users so that I can you know divide and then uh, give these frequencies to the individual users okay so that's why we have frequency division so we have to divide this frequency how can I divide it see here so this is going to be my first frequency second frequency third frequency fourth frequency and this is going to be my five, fifth frequency so this is so th we have five frequencies now each frequency consists of how many Hertz it is going to be hundred Hertz 100 hertz 100 hertz 100 hertz and again 100 hertz so total is going to be 500 hertz okay as you can see this is first frequency f1 frequency f2 frequency f3 frequency f4 and frequency f5 five frequency 500 divided by 5 each one will have 100 100 100 hertz so we have 500 hertz now the problem is oh let me just give you let me just change this 500 hertz to 550 hertz this is i'm so sorry for this this is my 550 hertz so now we have 500 hertz but now where this exactly where where from this 50 is coming where from where exactly it is coming from 50 the problem here is the 50 is coming from this gap you can see there is a gap between two frequencies first gap second gap third gap and fourth gap so this this is not 550 but let me just change it to 540 hertz i'm so sorry for this <laughs> okay just if i have six frequencies then i can have a 50 uh, you know hertz but i need to i need to precisely make it out so this gap is going to be of 10 hertz then again 10 hertz then again 10 hertz and again 10 hertz if you calculate it is 40 and when you add it it is going to be 540 hertz okay so that's in that way you know the frequency is divided and then this frequency is given to the user 1 this frequency is given to user 2 this frequency is given to user 3 and so and so forth okay now the question arises here that why do we have this gap actually this gap is known as guard bands this is known as guard band but why do we have this you see if we don't have any guard bands then what would exactly happen if i have a graph like this and if you remove the guard bands then one frequency is going to be very near to the other frequency sometimes the frequency is going to be overlapped complete overlap now this particular thing is known as interference and I really don't want this interference in my communication okay this is this is not acceptable so that's why we have a gap of you know the the number is completely depends on depends on you the, the number and the distance is completely depends on you so it may be 10 it may be 50 it may be 100 it completely depends on you okay so this is the guard band and this is the frequency division multiplexing i hope you understand it now let's understand time division multiplexing
time division multiplexing. Now what happened in time division multiplexing actually there in FTM we are dividing the frequencies but here in the time division multiplexing what we are dividing the time so let's say this is one channel the complete channel is given to you by some organization uh, just like the TRAI that we had seen right so let's say the, the there is a time slot that also given by the organization and the time slot is let's say the time slot is 500 microsecond so within this time you can access this channel this complete channel the channel is enabled for 500 microseconds and let's say I have here five users one two three four and five okay so this is first user second user third user fourth user and fifth user and here at the receiver side I also have five users two three four and five okay so now you you tell me <clears throat> that each user going to be have how much time so it is going to be pretty simple 500 divided by 5 so each user is going to have 100 microsecond time each user by means of 100 microsecond it is something like this that a user can transmit or receive the signal in his 100 microsecond this is the total time a user is getting from the 500 microsecond uh, a complete time slot so the first user is having 100 mi microsecond time slot in which he can transmit and in which he can receive the things and the next time he can he can have his chance chance of transmitting and receiving in his other 100 microseconds next chance is given to the second user and the next chance is given to the third user and the next chance is given to be uh, given to the fourth user and so on okay in the way uh, the tra it, it transmits the signals okay so this is going to be your tdm so again the uh, the thing is i will also write it down here let's say the first user is having a data of one the packet is one the second packet third packet fourth packet and fifth packet how it is going to be transmitted in his time slots so like it is going to be like this four then three then two then one then again 3, then 2, then 1, then 4, then again the third user for the third user is going to be 1, then 4, then 3, then 2, then for the fourth one it is going to 2, then 3, then 4 and going to be 1. So in that way it is receiving and the receiver side it precisely you know received in his time, time slot. Okay so this is going to be your time division multiplexing. So here the concept is, I'll write it down here, each connection occupies, each connection occupies a portion of time, a portion of time in the, in the link and in that time slot he can send or receive okay so next next understand wavelength division multiplexing wavelength division multiplexing okay now what have exactly happened in wavelength division multiplexing actually wavelength division multiplexing uses fiber optic cables okay so the diagram it looks like this so this is my three users is having a mux here and these are the light source so the uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 and it send it to the d mux by having this the lambda 1 lambda 2 plus lambda 3 here and this is going to be your d mux and it receives to the individual user lambda 1 lambda 2 and then lambda 3 this is how it works right and these are the light source keep that in mind as wavelength division multiplexing uses fiber optic cable and this mux can be a prism and this mux is going to be inverted prism okay so the idea here is I
So let me write it down here that design it is designed to use it is designed to use the high data rate designed to use the high data rate capabilities sorry of the fiber optic cable I'm a little bit slow here <laughs> can't believe this okay so at, as I told you that uh, this MUX is going to be a prism uh, which takes the light source and then it combines the thing and it is going to be you know uh, uh, it is going to be passes to the individual receiver using uh, inverted prism here okay and so now and now we have WDM now we understand something called as phase division multiplexing okay this is our last uh, multiplexing technique so let me write it down SDM which stands as space division multiplexing uh, what do you mean by space division multiplexing it is it is a multiplexing technique where where how effectively where how effectively we put our antennas we put our antennas which is important in a cell in a cell it means an area in a cell which is nothing but an area in an area for effective data transmission for effective data transmission now to understand this thing is basically what it says it says how effectively we put our antennas in a cell which doesn't look like this but actually the cell is in the hexagon format but let me draw a circle here how effectively you put your antennas in this particular area so that it gives you the benefit of higher data transmission so it is nothing but uh, it is nothing but a configuration of your antennas in a particular area how effectively you are putting the you know your antennas uh, to get a good transmission or uh, to, uh, to get a good communication between sender and receiver so there are certain techniques there are certain concepts actually they are very big concept but just right now you just understand the naming conventions we have something called as MIMO which stands which stands for multiple multiple input oh what is this <laughs> it is multiple input and multiple output I'll not explain the concept because they are they are very very large but you can visit professor Aditya Jagannath NPTEL course you will get the efficient information of MIMO I can give you the link in the description section you can go there and can you know learn certain things on on the on the concept of OFDM and uh, MIMO or MIMO okay so uh, this particular thing this configuration it looks like this so I have antenna 1 here antenna 2 here and antenna 1 at the receiver side and antenna 2 at the receiver side so this is going to be like this they are multiple input and the multiple output so they are multiple antennas at the center side and multiple antennas at the receiver side this is your multiple input multiple output in the same way i have something called as meso meso is nothing it is multiple input but single output i hope you can you can draw the diagram on the basis of you know uh, this thing so it is going to be multiple input here multiple input here but now there is only one single output so it is sending here and here this is the multiple input single output now we have something called as CMO CMO it stands for single input single input however multiple output multiple output so it looks something like this you have seen it you can understand it so I have a single antenna here 
but there are multiple antennas at the receiver side. So I can send the data to these two antennas at the receiver side. There is one more thing. Uh, according to the CMO, we are having CISO, which is the general line of sight communication, which stands for single input and single output. Okay, so it means we have a single antenna here and one single antenna here. And when it sends a data from one end to another end, it is going to be your single input and single output. I hope you understand all multiplexing techniques. There is one multiplexing technique that is left, which is CDM, a code division multiplexing, but that you can understand with the help of some, you know, uh, a representation on, um, let's say, a mathematical explanation it needs. So right now it is not necessary, but in the future or in the later sessions, I'll give you, you know, uh, the mathematical formulation of CDM. I'll also give you the mathematical formulation of FDM, TDM, uh, CDM, and SDM. But right now for the for the basic thing, for the fundamentals only, uh, this is not necessary. And that's why it is going to be a simple video. I hope you understand it. If you haven't, uh, you know, seen the previous videos, I insist you to please go through the other playlist to understand the uh, you know basics of uh, other things that is left over and uh, if you haven't subscribed my channel i again insist you to please subscribe it thank you for listening to me thank you for the help